Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. In a previous video, I built a DIY wind turbine out of some old fan blades and a drill motor. Now, I don't have space for this on my roof at home, and I think the neighbors would complain if I had this thing whipping around and possibly falling apart, because honestly, there's a few weak links in the construction of this, and I'm not quite sure how long this thing's gonna last. So before I hook this up to a battery charger or actually use it for anything, I'm going to set it up out at Sandland and just leave it at the top of the hill where it's the windiest and see how long it actually holds together. All right, we've got our wind generator in place, although it is not spinning yet because there's not really any wind today. It is trying to snow just a little bit. There might be some more wind later. And we are up on top of the hill here at Sandland, so this area is pretty consistently windy. It's fairly exposed up here, so hopefully that wind turbine will start working. In case you're wondering, uh, you can check out some of my other videos that explain what Sandland is. This is kind of our upper playground area where we're rebuilding the uh, Burger King Playland that we got from an abandoned Burger King. And then it's kind of the uh, farm or orchard part of Sandland as well. There's Carl's Treehouse. We've got the uh, little orchard in here with some apple trees. Got this screen porch, nice uh, picnic area, and then we've got some water collection for the roof over the screen porch area. That goes into these surplus barrels, and then just random stuff stored, lawnmowers, rusty tools, old ladders, that sort of thing. Here's some more of the Burger King Playland ready to be installed. And we've got the old zoo monorail train parked over there. And again, you can see all this stuff in other videos about Sandland. Right now, this video, I'm just focusing on this uh, redneck wind generator for now. So we're going to leave this out here and see just how long it holds together without completely flying apart. So we're back at Sandland. It's probably been more than a month since we left that wind generator out here. I intended to come back in a week, but winter happened, I got busy with other stuff, and I just haven't been back to check on it. It's fairly calm down here, but the wind is really whipping up in the trees, and I think it's going to be pretty strong wind up on the hilltop where we put that. So we're going to walk up there and see if there's even anything left of it. Definitely some things have fallen off. Got that aluminum support just hanging loose. The motor has stayed in place, but uh, we've definitely lost the turbine blades somewhere around here. I can't find the turbine blades out here in the snow anywhere, so we might just have to wait until spring and see if those show up again. So what if we try the other kind of wind turbine, where instead of having a horizontal windmill, you have a vertical egg beater situation with the motor mounted at the top or the bottom. Now these tend to be less efficient than the traditional windmill style, but on the other hand, they're much easier to make because your motor just sits, again, at the top or bottom, and even if they're less efficient, well, I don't need something super efficient if it's just sitting out there all week long charging up a battery. Now, I've been hoarding all these electric motors from go-kart projects and train projects and boats, and I bet we can use one of these as our vertical access generator. We also have this 36-volt motor from a mower. All right, I can get almost 3 volts out of this lawnmower motor just by cranking it over by hand, so this should be a good contender for our wind generator. Now for this style turbine, we need something more like cups than blades, so I'm going to have to find something I can make into uh, curved cups. Now I do still have quite a few plastic water barrels. If I can get them out of here, they're pretty frozen in at this point of the year. Okay, I was able to dig out some of these 15 gallon models. I could use the full 50s or even 30s, but then I think I'd have trouble transporting this rig in my car. These used to have soap in them, and some of them, I think, have some frozen soap still in the bottom. So once we cut them open, we'll have to get that frozen soap out of there and dispose of it. All right, so maybe we'll do something like that. Um, I can't quite decide how many fins I want. We might have to experiment with that a little. Now we need some kind of central shaft or support. Ooh, yeah, that is not straight enough. All right, this one looks all right. It's not 100% straight, but it is already painted, so it should last a little longer outside. All right, now we need some drive pulleys. 
So I need to dig through one of the more steampunk shelves in the garage. All right, we've got the basics of our wind generator. Got our artificial wind here. All right, so it does make power in kind of ideal, very artificial wind. I'm not convinced this is actually gonna spin in real world situations because this motor and this gearing, kind of like my last attempt, I think I've geared it too much and it takes a lot of effort to actually spin this against that motor. So that's going to be even worse once there's any kind of load on that motor, such as a light or a charging circuit or anything else. Again, I'm using a 36 volt lawnmower motor. It's not getting anywhere near 36 volts. In fact, I'm lucky if I get above 6 volts. All right, cut to a new day. Uh, I've lost some blood. I've swapped some things out. I've changed from <clears throat> the 36 volt motor to this little 24 volter, so it definitely has a lot less rolling resistance. It's a little janky because this pulley is not supposed to fit on this thing, but I kind of made it work with a hammer, so as with a lot of my projects, the more I work on this, the worse and worse it looks. I'm honestly a little ashamed to uh, display my lack of craftsmanship here, but if I actually felt any shame about all the garbage I build, I wouldn't have a YouTube channel in the first place. All right, so let's see how this complete crime against engineering performs compared to the last one. Once again, I'm enlisting my artificial wind. All right, so it's not completely terrible. Even at low speed on the leaf blower, I'm still able to get about five volts on this, which it's not enough to charge a car battery, but it's enough to charge a cell phone. And yes, this belt is a little loose, but honestly, it seems like it's working just fine. I did have this little tensioner arm, and I was considering popping that in there with a spring, but doesn't really seem like I need it. I'm just gonna make a little rain shield for the motor and then I think we're basically done. So while this thing is hideous, poorly balanced, inefficient, and probably won't last very long, it was all basically free. I mean, these are just scrap barrels, the drive belt, the pulleys, all that stuff is stuff I salvaged from other devices. The motor was from a scooter I found on the side of the road. The wood has all been used for something else in the past and is just scrap. I think the only things I really paid money for were the zip ties, the duct tape, maybe this bracket right here, and some of the screws. So this horrible thing probably cost me about three to four dollars in parts, and hey, if it'll charge a cell phone a couple times, I'd say that's worth it. I went through my junk drawer and found this USB cord that's already been cut up and ready to go. This is why I don't throw anything away ever. All right, so now I can charge my phone on the thing. All right, it is working with the wind. I'm not even cheating with the leaf blower. Yeah, my wind at home in the city here is just too inconsistent in between the buildings. We need to put it up on that hilltop at Sandland where it can get a good speed going. So here we are back at Sandland. We've got our new and possibly improved, although probably not really wind turbine set up. Again, it's not very windy up here today, but uh, it does get pretty windy on a normal basis. In fact, we're starting to lose some roofing material from that shed, so it gets a little too windy for the structures up here. Um, I'm staring directly into the sun, so I'm going to quit uh, blinking into the camera. And I think I've actually just found one of the blades from Wind Turbine version 1, which uh, is actually looking a little damaged. All right, so tune in to my next wind generator installment to see if this thing has survived a couple more weeks or maybe months of winter. And uh, maybe we'll redo something with this other wind turbine and make it a little better, but uh, you'll have to stay tuned and see what happens. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.